we are the Emotion Community Builders. We made this documentary to explore the history of North Londale, the neighborhood where many of us live. We did the research, conducted the interviews, and operated the cameras to make this video. We hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. Hi, my name is Latavia Blake, and I'm here at Douglas Park. In 1869, the West Park Commission was established to interlink Chicago boulevards by three main parks, Garfield, Humble, and Douglas. Douglas Park was named in honor of Stephen A. Douglas, a state senator who helped bring the Central Railroad to Chicago. In 1879, a small section, which includes the lagoon of Douglas Park, was opened. We always played sports, and uh, at night in the summer we'd have games, and we'd uh, uh, build little fires where we'd roast potatoes and marshmallows and all that. Uh, and we'd spend a lot of time in the park, in Douglas Park there. The park districts ran programs, at, like at a playground area. I always felt where we lived in that area, we had the city open to us. We could get to any part of the city in a very short period of time. We had the L, we had Kedzie Avenue, Western Avenue, Roosevelt Road. It wasn't like it was now. See, it's nationwide now. It was a nice place for people to come and relax themselves. All up and down here. And it wasn't like it is now. It's wide open now, but back then, it was very nice. I uh, went to Manly from 1936 to 1940, and the student body was, I would say, roughly two-thirds Jewish and about a third Italian. And um, we got along very well. There was no friction between the two groups. In our class, there was one black Afro-American, uh, Benny Rooks, and he, he fit in with us. That, that we had no prejudices, uh, race, religion, uh, nationality. We were one, I mean, there's 17 of us, and we were all just one, one group, and we got along really good. Did you live in Chicago all your life? No. Where you used to live at? Birmingham, Alabama. That's uh, my home. Oh, so how'd you get up here? Why'd you come to Chicago? Well, looking for better opportunities and whatnot. There were no jobs for blacks because the South was still, you know, very segregated. Mm -hmm. So I came to Chicago and that was during the war. Oh. And they had all these uh, factories and things, you know, doing war work so that you could get a better job. And that's what I did when I came to Chicago. I worked in a factory. I was a machine operator. I worked at Arlington and Kedzie, there was a popcorn factory there, and I worked worked there for a couple of years. You always always had to have a job to help your family make ends meet. My name is Thomas Chapman, and I'm standing in front of the old Sears Robot Building, now known as Holman Square, located on Holman Avenue and Arlington Street. Richard Sears moved his company to this location in 1905. The Sears Robot Building was a key business in the North London community, employing 7,000 people at this nationally recognized company. Sears opened their first retail store at this location in 1925. One of the things I remember about Sears was uh, they had their first store in the country, and I used to go there uh, before the Christmas holidays to look at the toys. Uh, you know, the Jews uh, don't believe in Christmas, so uh, I never got any of those toys. But you, I'd go there, and you'd see the electric trains running around, and I'd have a, a great time. In 1973, Sears decided to move their headquarters downtown, due partially to ongoing racial tension in North Lundell, leaving only their catalog business and putting thousands out of work. What was the relationship between the African Americans and the Jews? Did some Jews stay here? Well, not for very long. Uh, by 1955, 57, most of the Jews were out. But the relationship was uh, uh, friendly. There was uh, no 
friction, no uh, name calling or stone throwing or burnings or anything like that. Right, in other communities. Like in other communities, right. My name is Jamil, and I'm here at the corner of 16th and Hamlin. In this lot once stood the house of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It was January 26, 1966, that Dr. King and his wife Coretta moved to the North Lawndale community on Chicago's west side to dramatize the issue of public housing and urban decay. Dr. King lodged marches, protests, organized rallies, rent strikes, all involved around the issue of slum housing conditions in the city of Chicago. While in Chicago, King didn't only work on housing issues. He also advocated for public school integration, expanding mass transit, and establishing black-owned banks. Most people in banks and things like that was only like janitors, uh, elevator operators or something. There were no cashiers, but then when Martin Luther King started marching over in here, then they started to hire black cashiers. There was a lot of changes, because then blacks were working, you know. On April 4, 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. His assassination had a traumatic and devastating effect as riots broke out in North Lawndale and other South and West Side communities. That was something else when King was assassinated because there used to be stores all up and down Roosevelt Road. They burned those stores all night. Were they angry about Miss? It, were they, they were just angry, just doing something. Just doing something. Just doing something. So it didn't have nothing they, didn't, they, really, they really didn't know what they were doing. They were doing what everybody else was doing. They didn't know what they were doing. How did it make you feel? When people riding and fighting and burning and cutting, I wouldn't make you feel. I don't really know. I think had he lived, our country today would be a lot different than what it is because I, I think he would have been our first black president and I think he would have made a lot of changes in our government and in, in the way our country acts and responds to things like that. My name is Shirley Temple. I am standing near the corner of Roosevelt Road and Kinsey Avenue. Behind me is the London Plaza Shopping Center, which was completed in 1998. Next to the plaza is also a Cineplex Move Theater in the Community Bank of Lundell. Plans for a shopping center at this site were originally proposed in a community plan following the riots in 1968. 30 years later, plans for the plaza were finally realized. Today, the old Sears building is once again a centerpiece of the community. The Holman Square Community Center campus opened this site in 2000, providing community development and support service for this revitalizing neighborhood. Everybody should be helping everybody, not killing everybody, helping everybody you know, in the community like me. Everywhere I stay, I help everybody. I talk to the young kids. I tell them, you know, what I know, what I've been, and everything. Making this video, we learned a lot about our community. Thinking of Martin Luther King, he was a person of hope, not only for blacks, but for all of our children. Who lead us now? I say we as people need everyone to get their head on right and fight for equality, better housing, and jobs a better community. It is up to everyone.